Not getting enough power from your new APU? <clears throat> well, I have a groundbreaking method to beef you up. Well, your APU, that is. Putting the Hans and Franz act off to the side for a second now. I, as some as you, some of you may have noticed, I built a computer recently using one of AMD's APUs. And while I did feel it provided a great performance per value, I was thinking to myself, this, this is an unlocked CPU. Wonder how much more power I can wring out of it with some overclocking. Well, since overclocking CPUs is rather commonplace and guides are abound everywhere, I found it very strange that I really couldn't find a way to overclock the GPU side of my APU. So I did some digging and I compiled an easily accessible way to help you guys who may also have the same issue to the computer. Well, starting off on our little overclocking adventure, I'm going to be off camera for these next few sections, but don't worry, I'll still be there. See? Uh, I would have to say the thing we can benefit a bit most right now, especially with how games are running uh, more and more frequently, is increasing the frame buffer size. Now, the frame buffer size on video cards is going to usually be the VRAM. The VRAM is basically video random access memory. So it's the, the RAM for your video card. And we can actually increase that on our APU all the way up to two gigs. So it'd be like, it'd be like having a two gig frame buffer size on your AMD APU. So starting off with that, we're gonna turn on our computer here and we're gonna go into something called the UEFI, UEFI BIOS. And we're gonna do that by mashing F12 here on our motherboard. It's going to change whether, uh, it's going to change depend on, depending on which motherboard you're using. And so we're gonna to go to enter setup here. Now within our BIOS, we're gonna be looking for something called graphics configuration so that we can increase our frame buffer size here. So we're just gonna go over to peripherals on this specific BIOS, and we're gonna go down to graphics configuration near the bottom of the list here. We're gonna change this primary video device here to IDG video, so as it's targeting our APU. Then we're gonna go to integrated graphics. We're gonna change this option to force. And then we're gonna go down and change the UMA frame buffer size to two gigs. Now keep in mind where it's actually getting this frame buffer from. This is stealing from, from your system memory. So say you have eight gigs of RAM installed in your computer. If you change this value to two gigs, you now have six gigs allocated to the rest of your OS and for your CPU to use and two gigs are dedicated to the graphics section of your APU. Well, this will increase your performance in those uh, more demanding games that have like texture packs or if you wanna try doing at a higher resolution, the frame buffer will come in handy with stuff like that. Now back in the main menu of our BIOS, the next stop on our overclocking adventure to say is going to be overclocking the the GPU the core clock of our GPU. So that one this one's going to be a little time consuming as you have to set a higher speed stress test it after you boot up your computer computer again through the means of like a 3D mark or uh, a game or whatever to make sure that it, you're not crashing your system and then that qualifies as a stable overclock and then you can go back into your BIOS again and up it 
even further and then testing it again. This is why it's, it's a tad time consuming, but it does pay off in frame rates. So getting that started, we're gonna go down to advanced frequency settings on this BIOS. And we're, gonna, we're just going to change the CPU clock control up here. We're just gonna hit uh, backspace. We're gonna change this to 100.00, hit enter, and then that's just our multiplier here. So now we're just going to change the processor graphics clock here and backspace on that. And we're just gonna take this one up to 900. And that's, that should be a safe overclock to try out. And then we're just gonna go all the way over to save and exit. And we're gonna go save and exit setup. And then this will restart your computer and apply that overclock. And then you can go into your OS and test it using a synthetic benchmark or some games to make sure your computer does not crash. Now in the final stop of our overclocking adventure, the last thing I can suggest to you is going to be overclocking the memory speed of your RAM. This will directly affect the performance of not only your core clock speed, but your frame buffer size as well. So this is taking both of those and uh, putting those actually to more use than they would have been by themselves. Now, if you have high speed memory, you can enable this through an XMP profile. And this will, this means that it'll bring it up to the factory setting that uh, the manufacturer, manufacturer set for your RAM. So to adjust this, even further, we can go down to advanced memory settings here in our main menu. And then we will go down uh, to enable our XMP profile. We will just go to ex extreme memory profile here and we will enab enable profile one or two. Either one will apply the same multiplier. So we'll just enable profile one here. And so if you want to take it even further, as you can see, our overclock is already set to 2133 megahertz. But I want to take it a step even further beyond. So we're just going to change this value to 24. And that will take us all the way up to 2400 megahertz once we save and exit. Now the difficulty with uh, with overclocking your RAM is going to be testing it. Testing your RAM is a bit on the difficult side. So this tends to be more time consuming than testing the core clock of your GPU. And I would suggest this for more advanced users. Playing around with your memory frequency can be a bit tedious and very time consuming. Well, there you have it, guys. Through some careful overclocking, I was able to push my APU all the way up to 1100 megahertz on the GPU, uh, two gigs of that frame buffer size, and all the way up to 2400 megahertz on my system memory. And I saw improvements of 10 to almost 15 frames per second on some of my games, and that is a astronomical improvement. And while those improvements are vast, there are some inherent, uh, I don't want to say dangers, but cautions to overclocking any sort of component you may have. You run the risk of shortening the lifespan of any component that you're overclocking. Uh, any component will also be running hotter. So you gotta make sure that your cooling is up to the job. On my APU, I have an all-in-one liquid cooler strapped to it. It moves the heat away, I would say, better than air coolers in a normal sense, but it does tend to heat up your room a whole lot faster. But keeping that in mind, you gotta make sure to keep whatever you're overclocking cool. You don't want that stuff getting too hot or else it'll do something called thermal throttling, which will bring down the performance 
to uh, adjust for that increase in heat if the temperature gets too high. And that will just basically nullify any sort of overclocking that you just did. Well, that's all I got for you guys today in what I would consider a shorter than normal video. Thanks for sticking around. Remember to use those buttons that the great YouTube gave us. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Maybe if you have a question or something, I can possibly get around to it. Or if you feel like correcting me, because what I do isn't always correct to some people. I'm looking at you trolls. Well, thanks for sticking around through another episode of Gigahertz TV. Hope to see you guys in the next one.